Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. There has been a burst of seismic activity under the city of San Ramon, California in the San Francisco Bay Area. And this occurred last night, December 19th. There was even a magnitude four earthquake that popped off at a depth of 9.6 kilometers, as well as a bunch of other earthquakes, 28 other earthquakes, so 29 in total. And this is part of an ongoing seismic swarm under the city of San Ramon, that has been occurring since November 9th of this year, 2025. So what we're gonna look at in this video is what's happening right now and kind of forecast out a little bit as to what could happen. We're also gonna look at the history of seismicity in this area and also for the Calaveras Fault in general, because that is the fault that this is occurring on, just slightly off of it actually but that will help us understand whether this is just a, a seismic swarm that's going to kind of come to a close and not result in a larger earthquake or whether that is a possibility that we should be prepared for because uh, sometimes seismic swarms are foreshock activity that effectively are warning you that something bigger is coming. And the Calaveras Fault can have up to a magnitude 7.3 earthquake. That is the estimate provided by the USGS and the Northern Calaveras Fault where this is occurring is estimated to be able to produce up to a magnitude 6.5. It's been quite a while since the Calaveras Fault has had an earthquake of that magnitude. There was a 6.2 down near Morgan Hill in 1984. And we know that this fault is effectively locked and loaded. So a lot to cover in today's video. So let's begin by looking at the hard data and what's happening right now before looking at the historic context and then forecasting out what could occur in the future. So here we're looking at the seismic energy release for the San Ramon area for 2025 and all the earthquakes that have occurred here. First earthquake that popped off for the selected zone was in March. So this is when the data starts. We see our earthquake frequency down here. So you see that there were basically no earthquakes that were occurring up till November, here's November 9th, and just in general, the month of November, tons of earthquakes. And then here we have the month of December. Now, this blue line here is showing the cumulative seismic energy release. So a lot of people know earthquake magnitudes, which is a measure of just the intensity and also the energy of an earthquake. You can convert that into a measure like watt hours, or for example, kilowatt hours, megawatt hours, gigawatt hours. This makes it a bit easier to understand just how much energy is being released by these ground ruptures. And so we're looking at kilowatt hours here for our Y axis, this is logarithmic, going up to megawatt hours there and then 10 megawatt hours and more. And this is only going to add on top of itself because it's a cumulative magnitude. So because it's logarithmic, this big jump right there, November 9th, isn't the biggest increase in seismic energy, it's actually what happened there last night, December 19th, because we had that magnitude four earthquake, which makes up over a third of the seismic energy release from this entire swarm, okay? Now down below, we see it very clearly with our daily seismic energy release, again, the same scaling there, and we see that we had this big burst of activity beginning of November, kind of cooled off a little bit, but compared to before, this is certainly a notable seismic swarm. And then look at how it ramped up in December and actually stayed much more elevated compared to November. And that is what happened last night, the most seismic energy released from this entire swarm. You can kind of ignore this right here. This is basically just showing like normal activity. Then here is that first day in November where we had the big burst. And then you see that things continued. And actually look right there, you'll notice that we keep seeing this line plot go up. That means that there's more energy being released kind of continuously. Whereas immediately after the November 9th burst, we kind of had these days where there was nothing happening. Now it seems to be becoming more continuous and that most recent bump is the most significant. But if you're looking just at 20, 25, you'd be like, okay, this is crazy. We have something coming, but San Ramon actually gets these sort of earthquake swarms quite frequently on a geologic time scale. So here we have data from 2015, which is when the last seismic swarm occurred in and around San Ramon. 
we see that there were more than 4,000 earthquakes that occurred, but important context, none of them were greater than magnitude four. There was a big burst of activity here, October, and then things kind of cooled off. We see this triple fault structure to where these earthquakes are rupturing under San Ramon. So there's an interwoven network of these strike slip faults. There's some angle of inclination to them as well. And in general, this is accommodating stress and plate motion. But again, the Calaveras fault in general accommodates about six millimeters plus or minus two every single year of motion, but it does it in big earthquakes. So the long time frame, that is the motion and movement, but it's often not moving at all, only like a very little slow creep that makes up not even a third of the total slip. So we have these sort of seismic bursts that occur across time and it's not just 2015 or 2025 we see some other ones here as well since 1970 there was one in danville in 1970 the strongest magnitude being a 4.2 289 events greater than magnitude 1.5 1976 danville 1990 alamo 328 events and of course the 2018 swarm right here we see the duration and time for these uh, but the max magnitude for this 1991 is magnitude 4.4. And again, the way that seismic energy accumulates is that uh, a 4.4 is quite strong. So the cumulative magnitude for what we have happening right now is a 4.28. So that single magnitude 4.4 in 1990 is more than the cumulative magnitude for all these earthquakes that have occurred here. That does not mean that what's happening now is insignificant. And this is also interesting because Alamo is further north of San Ramon. So that's the very northern edge of the northern Calaveras Fault. And if we look at our SF Bay Area faults, we can kind of really clearly see that. So here we see the Calaveras Fault there in purple. Here's a probability that it'll have a, a high magnitude earthquake in the near future. And we see it going all the way up there, effectively to Alamo. And then we see it going down past Morgan Hill and even down further south than that. We also see the Hayward Fault. We see the Greenville Fault, uh, the San Andreas, the San Gregorio. So there's a lot of faults. Interesting activity in the Bay Area since the year 2000 is that you have two earthquakes on the Calaveras Fault that are magnitude five or greater. And then you have the magnitude six Napa earthquake 2014. And what's happening right now at the seismic burst is right in between that and the Franklin fault connects those two. So that's also a fault to watch, not necessarily just the Northern Calaveras fault. We talked about that in the first video I released back on November 20th. And so again, we see it very clearly there. And we do see this Green Valley fault that connects to the Calaveras fault. So there are times when you get a big enough earthquake that multiple faults will rupture. That 7.3 estimate is based off of if there is a simultaneous rupture with the Hayward Fault and also the Calaveras Fault. And that'd be the biggest earthquake that the Bay Area has seen in a long time. Loma Prieta down there was 19, uh, 1989. That was a magnitude 6.9. So we can look at some historic data um, for this area. So this is all the earthquakes for the Bay Area effectively going back to the year 1900, January 1st. Here we see our big 7.9, of course, 1906. That was a tremendous year for global seismic activity, as uh, I've talked about briefly in some other videos. Here's our 2014 South Napa earthquake on the West Napa Fault, which connects into this whole system. And if we go down here, we will see our other earthquakes. There's that 6.2 Morgan Hill, 1984. That was on the 24th of April. And interesting point about that, is that if we go over to um, our, our data here for that, we see that the fault rupture for that magnitude 6.2 in 1984 was to the south. This is like the did you feel it in the shake map and just seeing where the intensity was. And we don't see that intensity bleeding up to the northern Calaveras Salt. We see it going so south of the epicenter because the epicenter was right there. That is the circle for that magnitude 6.2. So that shows you that, okay, the, North, the Calaveras Fault is locked and loaded, right? It has about six millimeters per year of total movement if you look across long time frames. And in general, the slow creep is only zero to two millimeters per year. So there's a lot of motion that's not being accommodated unless there's a big earthquake, all right? 
So if we go back here, you'll also notice another earthquake that occurred 1911 near the Calaveras Fault, just a little bit to the west. Of course, there's other earthquakes that have occurred in this area. We're not really concerned about these, but you do see a lot of earthquake activity early 1900s in the South Bay area, which is interesting, right? And if we go up here, we see 2014, um, and the other two main earthquakes to really point out, of course, the 7.9 SF earthquake, 1906, and of course, our Loma Prieta 6.9, those are on the San Andreas Fault. You won't really notice any big earthquakes in between. So Napa, uh, Loma Prieta, the Napa quake with the biggest sense of Loma Prieta, uh, 7.9 uh, 7 there, 1906, all the kind of earthquake activity that occurred here, early 1900s, and then of course 1984 with this 6.2. But this whole area here, it's not doing slow creep to release all the stress. So this area is certainly locked and loaded for a big earthquake. A lot of people worried about the Hayward Fault but the Calaveras Fault is not really getting too much attention. And it's interesting to note that the two biggest seismic bursts and swarms were 1990 and what's happening right now. So in fact, this could be showing that this is building up to something over a longer time scale. That's important to note. We can look again at our data here for this. Uh, here are all the earthquakes that have occurred as part of the seismic burst. And we see some activity also here, a little bit to the west of Dublin. Uh, this is kind of popping off all the time in some aspects, but there's a magnitude 3.9 right there. So some big earthquakes there as well, but here's our San Ramon earthquake swarm. And if I put on only less earthquakes, we see 293 earthquakes part of this swarm thus far, and it's been less than uh, two months. It's actually only been about a month and 10 days or so. So 40 days. So this is a significant seismic swarm that is occurring. I'll keep you up to date on everything. If we look at the data, historic, it seems that this is most likely to just be a swarm that will then cool off. But you also have to take into account the fact that, as we discussed, this part of the Calaveras Fault hasn't had a big rupture in quite some time. You have to go back to 1861 when there was a magnitude 5.4 on the Northern Calaveras Fault. So it is locked and loaded and overdue for a big earthquake. And these seismic swarms uh, have kind of been increasing in frequency since 1970. So over a longer time frame, right, this is, this is a little concerning. And you take into account how we had the Napa earthquake, magnitude 6, and we had some magnitude 5s on the Calaveras Fault. Those are the three biggest earthquakes that have occurred in the 21st century for the Bay Area. And well, this whole area is definitely one to watch. So if you're living in those zones, I would definitely be aware, be prepared, have an earthquake preparedness plan. Because if there is a magnitude 7.3, let's say, right? That's the estimated maximum magnitude that could occur for these faults. And we don't know really what's possible. So keep that in mind too. But let's say a magnitude seven occurs. That's a big, big earthquake, folks. I mean, that's like at least a minute or more of long period, low frequency surface wave ground motion. And it's the longer that the ground is shaking that the more likely there's risk of buildings collapsing, things of this nature. I mean, remember back at the Loma Prieta, it was all the way down here, whereas we had collapses with bridges, like the Bay Bridge, up all the way near San Francisco. So uh, this energy can really propagate out and especially will propagate out along the trace of the fault, which runs through these valleys because it helped create them, which is where the people live. So we have to be really mindful of that. So make sure you have an earthquake preparedness plan. You have uh, some emergency food and water on hand. That's always a good thing to do. And if you'd like to stay up to date with what is happening here in the Bay Area with earthquakes, and I'm your guy, I'm your host, Stefan Burns. And also, if you want to stay up to date with what is happening with the Earth overall energetically, then you can subscribe to the channel. We cover earthquakes, volcanic activity, severe weather, geomagnetic storms, solar activity, space weather, planetary alignments, interstellar and cosmic forces, everything. We have a lot of fun here. Hope to see you around. Thank you all so much. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please smash that thumbs up button to help the channel grow. And I'll see you all very, very soon.